Hello everyone, this is Laura Johnson from Shining Star Waldorf School here with the second grade clock project. So second graders, you should have a variety of these papers here on the table included in your packet that you took home. So for this project, you're going to need three different sized circular objects. I'm using two bowls and a roll of tape. You're also going to need some scissors. You're gonna need your crayons and a pen or a pencil for tracing. Okay, you're also going to need this little um, pin. This also came in your packet. You should have several, but you only really need one for this project. Okay, so make sure that you have that. The bowls need to be not so big that they go beyond my paper size. So make sure that they're not so big that they don't fit on the paper. Okay, so the first step is we're going to trace three circles. And it's up to you to choose what colors of paper you want for that. So for my largest circle, I think I'm going to choose my lightest green. Okay, so your largest circle, which I'm going to be using this yellow bowl, put it down on the paper, take a pen or a pencil, I'll use a crayon actually for this, and go ahead and trace around the bowl making sure that it does not exceed the edges of the paper. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to cut that out. Okay, take your time cutting it out, making sure that you're cutting the best circle that you can. Okay. All right. Now I have my largest circle finished and I don't need this paper anymore unless I want it for details. Okay, now I'm going to decide the second, the second circle which is going to be the smaller bowl. So what color do you think would look nice on top of this? I think I will choose this darker green color. Okay, so put the bowl right on the darker green. We're gonna trace around it. Okay. And now I'm done with that bowl. And I'll go ahead and cut this circle out. Okay. And there we go. We have the second circle. Make sure that you have a little bit of room between each circle so they're not super, super close. So you can see that the tape is gonna be just right. And I think I'm going to choose, I think I'll choose the pink for the most center circle. So I'm gonna use this pink. And again, second grade or anyone who wants to join in on this project, you can use really any paper. You can use the same color. I'm using the different colors because I think it makes it nice and a little bit more obvious. So I can choose to do it on the outside of the tape or trace on the inside, which is kind of cool. So if you have like a roll of duct tape, you could use that. Okay, so we're done with that. And now I'll cut out the smallest circle. Okay. All right, now there's my smallest circle. Now I have, you should have at least one page left after cutting your three circles. If you don't, you can use any paper that's big enough, but you're gonna wanna choose one of these two papers to be the background, so to be behind these. So it can be that way, or it can be that way. Um, I think I will choose the red because I think it's a little bit bolder. So I'll save this piece of paper for something else. Okay, so that's the first step. You should have three circles on the rectangular page in the back. Okay, so now I'm going to number the clock. The clock is actually going to be in this green zone. And we're going to, um, well, the whole thing's going to be the clock, but we're going to put the numbers 
on the green zone there, okay? So I can take just those two circles, the smallest and the middle, and I'm going to find the centers of these and put the pin through so I make sure that I found the center. Now to find the center of these circles, you can fold and make a little indentation on both sides. And it should make a little cross in the middle. So now if you can see that, there's a little bit of a cross and I can now put with my pen a dot. That's where I know that the middle is. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to the second biggest circle. Fold the circle in half, make an indent here. Don't have to go across the whole thing. So now I have a crease that way, and I'm going to do a crease this way. And now in the middle, I should have kind of like an X, and I can put a mark there for the middle. So now that I have the middles of those two circles, we can actually go ahead and just do the biggest circle too. Okay, let's be ambitious, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fold this biggest circle in the same exact way as the others, making a X. It's hard to see here, but the X is right here where I folded, and so it makes an X in the middle, and then I make a mark right in the middle. Now this part you might need some help from a parent, but I'm going to take this pin, put this big circle here on the page, okay, and I'm going to try to line this up as best I can. So what I can do is fold this over where I already marked it, and I can put a little dot right there to get the middle of this paper too. All right. So now I'm going to take this pin and I'm going to very carefully push it through the paper like this to make a hole. Okay, so each one of these needs to have a hole in it. So I like to do one at a time. So you push it through. Now that one's done. That one's done. And this one's done. Be careful not to rip the paper too much. So now that they all have a hole, I can easily slip them on because I already made the puncture. Okay. And I can go all the way through even this back page. Then on the back, you need to spread out the little holder, the fastener. And now everything should be together and also be able to turn. Okay. So like we said, this middle circle is where we're actually going to put our numbers for this clock. And so there are 12 numbers. So how can we make that um, easier for us to do? Well, we can use crayons, we can use uh, pencils, or we can use any kind of object to help us put down markers for where the spaces are. So I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12. I can just use a crayon, my crayons if I want to. So up here we have a crayon up here for 12 o'clock, a crayon down here for 6 o'clock, crayon over here for 3 o'clock, a crayon over here. Do you see how I made kind of as even as I can? I made a, like an X here. Okay. So now between each of those should be two crayons. One, two. Or you could use pennies or coins to mark your place. Or you could use crayons just like I'm using right now. And since I don't have 12 block crayons, I'm going to use uh, two stick crayons to help me. Okay. So Let's count to make sure that we're all good. We should have 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we do have 12. So underneath each of those, I'm going to write the number that needs to be there. So at the very, very top should be 12. 12. Okay, now I can remove that because that one's kind of rolling. Okay, the next one 
is one, two, three, four, five, right below the 12, right straight down is six. I suggest doing this with a pencil first, like in a, a graphite pencil so you can erase. I'm going ahead and doing it with a pen, but I would suggest doing it and then 10, doing it with a pencil so you can adjust the numbers. So you see, I use these crayons to help me understand where to write the numbers. Okay, so now we have all the numbers written on our middle circle, and we can take all of our crayons away. Now on a clock, this stays fixed. So this is the part that's going to um, shift around and help us kind of hold our pins up so it makes more of a dramatic uh, visual. So one of the pages that you cut a circle out, you're going to make the long hand and the short hand. So I'm going to choose green, or you could choose really any of the colors you use. Probably not the same color that the middle circle is, but what do you think? Let's see, light or dark? Light or dark? I think I'll actually choose light. So one hand is going to be very long, not longer than this pink circle, but one hand is going to be long and one hand is going to be short. So how can I do that? I can trace, I can kind of draw out a hand. The hands are kind of like an arrow or a long water drop. So I'm gonna make my long hand just like this. And you might have to retry a few times and you can give yours some style if you want to. Uh, you can make it like a little arrow or you could draw on it and make it a little design. So there's one arrow and you can test, you can hold it over and see. I don't want it to go way over here. I want it to just stay inside the middle circle. And now I can use this to make sure that the second arrow, the, the short arrow, is going to be a lot shorter. So I don't want it to be as long. I want it to be short. So there we have the short arrow. Okay. All right. And cut that out. Now, the pin that we're using to fasten everything together is going to go through these as well. So we'll go ahead and quickly, we'll undo that and we'll put this through. So you can make a little mark where you're going to push it through. These fasteners are meant to, to unfasten and fasten so you can check throughout your project. So I'll just take this out and I'll put the small hand first by poking through gently through the paper and then poking through the large one. Okay, you might need a parent's help to see if that's too hard. And then going through each of my big circles back to together. Okay. And then back through the largest sheet, which is our background and then you can pull each of the fasteners back and there we are we have a clock so you can shift everything around so far which is kind of fun but what we're also going to do the reason we want this to be able to shift is because we're going to do the four seasons too okay so that's kind of cool so after you're done with this part of the project you have your clock, you have your two hands, one is short and one is long. You can even make these different colors if you wanted to. You can make different time. And we'll do a little practice on how to tell time with one of these clocks, but for now we'll just focus on making this craft. So in the very outer circle, this biggest, biggest one, we're going to do the four seasons. And we can represent these very simply. So the season we're in right now, is spring. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw some spring tulips here to represent spring. So this top part is now going to represent spring. 
because that's the season that we're in. You could come up with lots of things to represent spring. You could draw birds, plants. I've decided to draw tulips. Now if we turn the clock, the next season that we have over on this side, so if you line up 12 with spring, three o'clock will be summer. So over here, right next to the three o'clock, I'm gonna do summer. And what can I do to represent summer? I can do a sun. So I'm going to do a little orange sun. You can use pens or pencils, whatever helps you make um, a nice little picture. And maybe I'll do a little bit big leaves because in the summer, they're, the leaves are the biggest. So there we have summer. Okay, now we have spring, summer. The next season, which is going to be at six o'clock, if I don't rotate this, if I put 12 o'clock at spring, six o'clock is going to be fall. And what I think represents fall are colorful leaves. So I'm going to do some colorful leaves here. Some orange and red leaves falling from trees. You could also do a few empty branches if you wanted to, to make it a little bit more complicated. Okay, now over here at the nine o'clock, at the very other side, we have winter. So winter, we could make a snowflake. We could make a little snowflake over here to represent winter. Or we could have snow and rain and icicles, something that makes it look very cold. Okay, so for this project, you're going to have three circles, small, medium, large, two hands that move around, the fastener, the background page, and then we did our four seasons. So right now, we put the season that we're in at the top, which is spring, but when summer comes, you're gonna turn this, and we're going to have summer, and then you can have fall, and then you can have winter. Okay, but right now it's spring. And at this very moment, well, well, it's about, I'm not sure. Let's see. It is, let's see what time it is so we can put it at the right time. It is, let's see. Hmm, where's my, where's my clock? It is 10.32, so we can put our clock at 10.32. So, 10, each one of these represents five minutes. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and a little bit. So that's the real time that this project was filmed. Okay, everybody, good luck on your project, and we'll be using this clock so we can learn how to tell time.